Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and in this video I would like to introduce model parallelism in Amazon SageMaker. So in the previous video we discussed data parallelism where we split the data set across a cluster of training instances to speed up training. Uh, model parallelism is different. Uh, here we're going to split the model itself um, and distribute the computation, the training job, on a cluster of training instances. So why would we want to split the model? Well, simply because some models are so large, so complex, that they don't fit in GPU memory. Uh, think about uh, very, very large natural language processing models like uh, T5 and its variants, or uh, very complex computer vision models that work on 3D images or 3D videos, especially at high resolution. These are huge, they have so many parameters, and they can't fit in, uh, inside the memory of a single GPU. So, model parallelism will thus split the model in different partitions. Okay, so uh, the first layers of the model will run on a specific GPU, let's say GPU 0, and then the next layers will run on GPU 1, and the next layers will run on GPU 2, and so on. Okay, so that's the, that's the basic ID. Now you, you may wonder, how do those GPUs collaborate, right? Because when we're forward propagating, obviously we need to go through all layers. And, and the same goes for backward propagation. So how does that work? Well, this is exactly uh, what model parallelism in SageMaker does. It uh, efficiently partition models and keeps all GPUs busy at all times. So let me explain. So imagine we have two GPUs, okay? And we are partitioning the model across those two GPUs, okay? So follow me here. Um, we will have partition one, okay? So let's say the first half of the model, and we will have partition two, okay? Ignore everything that I haven't highlighted yet. So when the training data is sent to the first GPU, then the batch will be forward propagated through the first partition, okay? And then it's gonna be propagated to the second half of the model on GPU2. But you could say, hey, wait a minute. I mean, if, if this batch is being propagated here, uh, then while this takes place on GPU1, then what's happening on GPU2? It would be a shame if this one wasn't doing anything, right? Your GPU utilization would be terrible. So in fact, what we do is we split the training data, uh, the batches, in the training data in micro batches. Okay, so we further split the, the mini batches in the training set. And so we send different um, uh, micro batches to the GPU. So for example, you could say, well, um, so batch uh, one started here and then forward propagated here. And then, okay, it moved on to GPU two and while GPU2 was busy forward propagating batch 1, then GPU1 could start to forward propagate batch 2, okay? Or micro batch 2, I should say. See what I mean? So it's a sequence of micro batches. And one, when one GPU is done uh, forward propagating one micro batch, then it sends the activation values to the next GPU. And it can immediately start on another micro batch. Okay, makes sense? So this way you can keep all your GPUs busy uh, during forward propagation. Now, what about backward propagation? What happens? Uh, so you could say, okay, so uh, let's say GPU two is done forward propagating micro batch one. So it would then need to back propagate batch one, okay? And, and then uh, you would need to do the same on GPU-1. And, and you can see that there's a bit of a problem here because uh, GPU-1 could be still uh, forward propagating the next batch, right? So it's literally you're trying to go in, in both directions on a one-way road, right? Imagine you're, you're uh, driving on a small you know, uh, 
country road and there's a, there's only one one lane and well there's you know traffic in front of you you know that's that's going to be a problem so it's exactly what we have here okay so you could say okay well you know we can kind of synchronize those different gpus and they can wait and signal that oh now i'm back propagating so save your activation values and please back propagate this micro bash and then you can move on to the next you can see it's ah, yeah it's it's not it's not obvious so instead of doing this uh we actually replicate the partitions okay so on gpu1 we have two copies of partition one and on gpu2 we have two copies of partition two okay and this is a parameter that we can set the number of copies but i guess you would need at least two okay so now you could say all right uh, partition one first copy is always forward propagating partition two first copy is always forward propagating and then the other copies right partition two second copy partition one second copy are always backward propagating right so now you have a two-way street right so you can keep a, a pipeline you can keep running a pipeline of micro batches and they can go you know they can go like that right so they can start from the training set uh, you start forward propagating here and then move on to this and then on the second partition run the back propagation for that same batch and then send it back here so you have a pipeline of partitions that are constantly busy on a sequence of uh, of micro batches okay so we can see in this example let me uh let me remove all the red lines here okay so we can see here micro batch n is actually almost done right it has already gone through the three other partitions and it's being backward propagated here and and the next one you know is uh, has gone through the first two partitions and is on the third one and the next batch is already gone through this etc etc okay you, you get the id so that's how you can keep all the gpus busy at all times uh, thanks to uh, replication and to micro batches okay and this pipeline architecture it's called interleaving okay we'll see this in the parameters okay well i hope this makes sense so now let's uh, take a look at an example um so let me show you where the examples are so there are in this repo um training slash distributed training and you have uh, tensorflow and pytorch examples right so model parallelism here uh, documentation is here i will put all those urls in the description don't worry and we're running here a simple example based on tensorflow okay so please make sure you have the latest SageMaker sdk at the time of uh, recording this is 2.19 right that's the one that's the one you need so import this uh, this notebook also uses SageMaker experiments to keep track of uh, of the training job um, this is not really relevant for this example but uh, i'll skip the sm experiment stuff um, to keep the explanation short and uh, here we have our tensorflow script okay uh, so obviously you need to import uh, the model parallel package you need to initialize it okay so far so good and then okay we load the data set we build our uh, tensorflow data set object okay and we build the model and you can see this is the the traditional uh or actually the usual uh, keras api right uh, we own the only difference is we uh, actually extend uh, this distributed model object okay we use this as a as a base class okay so don't forget to do this but everything else in here is vanilla keras then we instantiate the model we select a loss function uh, we define metrics etc okay um, there's a bit of a checkpointing activity here um, again this is not mandatory it's just good practice to 
to have uh, to save checkpoints for long running jobs you know should anything go wrong uh, or should you want to further train that model you can uh, you could actually restart from uh, checkpoints saved in s3 so there's a little bit of code here but again this is not uh, this is not mandatory let me skip this it's actually very good code you could uh, copy paste but we don't really uh, we're not really interested here okay uh, what we are interested in is this uh, SMP step function okay so um, you can uh, you can see this here you uh, you annotate uh, the function that actually uh, forward propagates and return gradients okay so we here we see forward propagation right using our model we compute the loss uh, we compute the gradients and we returns those uh, three tensors gradients loss function uh, loss loss and predictions okay and so that's what you need to do so probably you know this this code is uh you know is pretty reasonable it's uh pretty standard i would say uh so if you already have that and so long as you uh, return uh, the the tensors uh, and you annotate uh, with the smp.step uh, annotation then that's fine right you can uh, you can use what you have okay and then so we have our uh, we have our training step function okay uh, which again is pretty uh, is pretty standard right accumulate the gradients apply the gradients etc etc okay so certainly you uh, you already have this in your code and then you need to define uh, a function for evaluation okay so the the test step so to speak so again computing predictions computing loss um, measuring accuracy etc and returning the loss okay so again you need to to annotate it with this SMP step um, annotation okay um so that's pretty much what you need to do and then uh, the training loop is uh the training loop is uh, standard and we just need to have this uh, barrier call to uh pretty much synchronize all the all the different gpus at the end of the training loop okay so they will just wait for one another uh and, and make sure they complete uh, the loop uh, simultaneously right and here it's uh, again it's more checkpointing stuff that we can uh, we can ignore for now okay so summing things up import the package initialize it right um, make sure your model extends the distributed model class and then okay checkpointing stuff um, the SMP, so the, the SMP step function, okay, that runs um, forward and backward propagation. And then the evaluation function that pretty much uh, uh, evaluates the, the results on your, uh, on your uh, validation set. And that's about it, right? That's about it. So this is a simple example and yeah, and synchronization here, the barrier here. So this is a simple example, but you see it's it's not you know it doesn't take uh, a lot of changes to your code, um, and uh, and you can it's it's almost the same for uh, for PyTorch same philosophy different APIs but same philosophy and you can go and uh, and look at this example. Okay, and once we've done this, well, okay, that's experiment stuff. Okay, well, once we've done this, we can just create our estimator. Passing our training script, TensorFlow 231, Python 37, and the distribution configuration, okay, uh, which uh, tells us, okay, my distributed training setup is model parallelism this time. I want to enable it. And the parameters are I want to work with uh, two micro batches, okay, so I will have two copies of each partition okay 
and I want to work with two partitions. Okay, so it's exactly what we see here, right? Two partitions here and here, and each partition uh, handles two micro batches on the same GPU. Okay, so uh, for a total of four <laughs> partitions working simultaneously. I want to use this interleaved pipeline mode. Uh, there is another mode called simple uh, that is, uh, you know, simpler as you would expect and uh, that synchronizes uh, the, the partitions uh, differently. Uh, so um, probably not as efficient. And you can optimize for uh, memory usage or for speed. That's another setting that you have, okay? And if you want to use um, uh, data parallelism on top of that, uh, you can use Horobot as well, right? But I didn't use that today. Okay, you have some MPI options for distributed training management as well. But the key thing is really this, okay? Right, so make sure you understand those uh, those settings, right? Which again, match what we have here. Okay, and then it's done. We call fit and we pass the SM experiment config optionally. And the rest is what we already know, right? So we fire up uh, we fire up our uh, training instances and the model is automatically um, profiled, as you can see here, and it's uh, split according to the number of partitions that you requested, and then it goes on and trains, okay? And so you just have to wait for completion. Everything else is just a normal uh, training job, right? And we can see the training log, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Well, that's a, that's just a short intro to uh, to model parallelism. Uh, I'm sure you guys will uh, get to work on bigger and more complex examples. So feel free to get in touch if you have questions or if you have feedback. I'm always uh, happy to uh, to help you out. And until then, well, keep rocking.